Welcome to your Daily Detroit for Friday, June 26th, 2020. Look, with everything in the world, when we can, it's important to take a break, to have something fun, to help get us away mentally from, well, everything that's going on. So today, a tasting of Antiel, a Detroit-based tequila brand, then a conversation with their co-founder, Don Ferguson. I'm Jarrah Stays, and joining me for today's show is Sven Gustafson, coming at you from the socially distant North End headquarters of Daily Detroit, otherwise known as My Backyard. You know, we love to try booze, Sven. I think that's a, a truth here. Whether it's booze or, frankly, anything to do with food. We've done the, the Hudsonville ice cream. We've done Casa Mara Club. We've done a bunch of stuff. Today, it's close to your heart, tequila. Yes, sir. Uh, one of the perks of the job, no doubt about it. Today, we've got a bottle of Antiel brand. This is a new it's premium tequila with natural flavors. And this is their Coconut Lime Blanco, which... Jerry, I got to say, I've never heard of a tequila, a coconut lime flavored tequila. I don't think I've ever, well, I have heard of flavored tequila, but definitely not with these flavors. Definitely interested to give it a rip. Let's, let's see how it tastes. I mean, skeptical Jerry is skeptical, but I'm, I'm looking forward to this. All right. So this is a Blanco tequila. So, you know, if you were just drinking it in your glass, it doesn't look gold like a Cuervo gold. You might be thinking of it. This could be gin or vodka, right? For sure. And to give people an idea, what exactly is tequila? It's a spirit made in Mexico where they hack essentially the the long, spindly, pointy-ended arms off the agave plants, which can grow to be huge plants, by the way. And they essentially cook these things in a huge vat and mash them down and then ferment that uh, and all the sugars that come out of it and everything. And I personally love tequila. It's one of my favorite liquors. It's one of my favorite sipping liquors. You know, I used to live for a brief time in Tucson, Arizona. To me, tequila tastes like the desert. Agave is very much a desert plant. It's a succulent. It tastes like the earth. It's a very earthy flavor to me. It tastes dusty, kind of alkaline, like the desert soil and everything. Uh, I love it. I'll note here that uh, this is a Detroit-based brand. So it's made, according to the bottle, it is made in Mexico, but it is a Detroit-based brand. So that's one of the reasons why we're giving it a giving it a whirl. We don't really try things that aren't based outside of Michigan. Well, uh, with that said, enough talk. Let's uh, bottoms up, huh? So at first, the, the coconut and lime flavor is pretty subtle. And I will say that the, the lime is sort of a natural thing, right? A lot of people do shots of tequila with the, the salt lick and then the, the lime chaser. So that's a, that's a natural, of course. And margaritas, of course, also has a lime flavor profile. Coconuts are definitely a new kind of twist to go with tequila. Personally, you know, I like regular tequila. I like my tequila relatively unadulterated or in a margarita. That said, the coconut is fairly subtle. I think it comes up on the finish more than right up front in the nose. Your initial experience is this is tequila, and it's a nice tequila. Subtle, you know, coconut finish. It's good. I can see a lot of people will like it, I think. Not really my jam entirely, but it's good. See, I enjoy it because, uh, I'll be honest, Sven, I'm not a big tequila guy. Like, a lot of times, I don't drink a ton of tequila. And one of the reasons is I find it hard to drink. I find it hard to get through. So this I actually enjoy because the little bit of the lime and the coconut, I guess when you shake it all up, I believe. (laughs) But it makes it more drinkable for me. It makes it more accessible. I don't know what that says about my palate. Generally, I am a gin and whiskey guy and bourbon guy. Tequila is something I normally steer away from. This I feel a lot better about drinking neat. Well, you're also uh, drinking it mixed. Uh, we got some club soda. We put a little grapefruit peel and then some uh, a squeeze of lime in there. Which So I'm going to follow suit and see how that kind of changes the game here. Mm-hmm. All right. little squeeze of lime. Give that a little shake. Mazel tov. I mean, it's very refreshing. You know, it's a nice summery drink for sure. No question. I, I, I could see a lot of people liking this. Yeah, I tried the mixed drink and I've tried the neat and I enjoy both. But again, I'm not a tequila expert, but I think this is an enjoyable one. And I'm also glad to see that there's a Detroit based tequila brand. It's kind of cool. It's not the only one. There's another one called Cabresto, which I've been meaning to try, and I have not found it in any stores, but it, it's connected to uh, a family that owns multiple businesses in southwest Detroit. Another, you know, it's a, it's tequila. It's made in Mexico. 
I think with contacts that the family has back in their home country, but uh, you know, the business is based here. All right. So I guess it comes down to this Sven, and we did this with Randy. We've done this with Cheyenne and Cheyenne's got some in the distance here. So although we're not going to hear from her cause she's too far away, thumbs up or thumbs down Cheyenne. So thumbs up. Yeah, I'll give it a thumbs up. I mean, I'd be really curious to try their regular Blanco or Reposado even. But uh, I, yeah, I think this is a versatile tequila for people who maybe aren't seasoned diehard tequila drinkers. And thumbs up for me. Joining us via Skype is Don Ferguson. He is co-founder and CEO of Antiel Tequila. Don, welcome to Daily Detroit. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Now, I understand this company is a bit of a husband and wife duo, you with your wife, Nyana Ferguson, and uh, as well as your business partner, Michael Rowalt. Is that how I pronounce his name? Yep, Mike Rowalt. So we, we just Rowalt. call him Row. Makes it a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. How did you start the company and you know why tequila? So why tequila? Let's start with that first. I'm a big fan of tequila. I was drinking tequila well before it became popular and all the celebrities wanted to jump in and and make billions of dollars off of it. So it was just spirit of choice. And as I learned more about it, I learned that it was maybe a healthier spirit with being lower in calories compared to vodka, which is kind of a clean spirit as well. And then the sugars are actually digestible. So they don't stay in your system Hmm. for a long time and kind of give you that hangover. That's a a lot of the times where that hangover comes into play, besides drinking way too much, obviously, but it's those sugars. So when you get those sugar fruity drinks, they just don't work well with your system. So that's interesting. And I'd never heard that before, but that makes sense because I've always said the same thing about tequila, that it somehow just agrees with me because Lord knows I've overindulged on tequila on a couple of occasions. (laughs) And, uh, it didn't hurt me anywhere near as bad as other spirits. Right. So so what it is, is the sugars that are in tequila are from the agave plant, obviously, and they're called agavins. It is a sugar that will actually digest. It, it will go through the system, whereas rum or maybe bourbon or whiskey that's made from corn, those sugars are quite different and they adhere to the the body so that way it, they kind of linger around. And with me, kind of what you said is, you know, when it can be digested or it can exit out of your body, you don't have that hangover the next day. Now I'm 47, so my hangovers are taking a little bit longer to process <laughs> compared to when I was in my 20s. Sure, that happens. The company kind of came around basically because I do love tequila and, and my wife and I were sitting on the couch and we were watching our favorite show, Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives. And I said, you know, why doesn't anybody do this for the tequila industry or the cocktail industry, liquor industry, you know, whatever. And she kind of posed a challenge and said, well, why don't you? And I started thinking about it. So I started blogging. I started writing about tequila. I created another company called Teak Life. And it's a social media micro-influencer company. Out of that, I was in corporate America for a long time. A lot of changes were coming about where my wife worked at the time. A lot of changes were going on there. And we just started looking at other opportunities. And she asked me, if there was anything that you could do in life, you know, kind of starting over, what would you do? And I said, well, I'd own a tequila company because I love it. It's a passion. But I I followed that up by saying, there's just no way I can do that. Money, I don't know the first thing to do it. She just kept asking, you know, well, take money out of the equation. Why not? Well, this and that. And, you know, I I just kept making up excuses. But like any strong businesswoman, I ran out of excuses to give her. So (laughs) I kind of said, okay, well, if you find a distillery that we can work with, I will figure out if we can do it or I'll entertain the offer. Let's just put it that way. But I still in my head, no, there's no way we can do this. Me being kind of a tequila snob in a way, uh, we got the samples and uh, they were good. (laughs) Um, It kind of threw a wrench in my plans that I ultimately defaulted to, there's no way. And I think in society, we do that a lot. If something's difficult or unknown, we kind of default to, I can't do it. 
And, you know, she didn't allow me to use that excuse. So we tried the samples. They, they were good. There were some changes that I wanted to make. And then when we sat down, we just figured out how we could do a small batch, not knowing that if it would sell, not knowing anything else about the industry, but we figured it out and we could do a very small batch. And then it took off from there. Mm-hmm. That's great. And then how long have you been around? And is this the full-time job for, for you and your wife? My wife does still work in finance for another company. I left my corporate job. I was a divisional vice president of operations for the largest mortgage company in America. So you can kind of figure out which one that is, (laughs) Uh you know, clues aside. Rhymes with sticking. It does. (laughs) Yeah. So the day after my 11 year anniversary, I put in my two weeks notice, which turned into five weeks. I just wanted something new. I wanted to pursue a passion. Uh, It took a little bit longer than I thought it would for the tequila to come out. A lot of things happen in business. And then especially at that time, there was kind of a terror of a trade war going on with Mexico, which didn't help. But it took, you know, from the beginning phases, to actually hitting the first store, it took 11 months, Mm. which is extremely fast in dealing with two governments, new tariffs, not knowing what we're doing and figuring that out. It's been a fun ride. I've, I've learned a lot. So end of August, 2018, the first store ordered and received their products. Since then, we are now approaching 400 locations just in Michigan. That's great. Can you tell us a little bit about how your tequila is made? I mean, obviously you're making this in Mexico as all tequila is, right? Correct. Tequila is one of the most regulated spirits in all of the world. It has to come from Blue Weber Agave. That's the only agave that they can use. There's over, I think, 300 different variations of agave, but that is the only one that's regulated to use in tequila. It has to be made in Jalisco. And then on top of it, even the behind the scenes, you have to get government approval to work with a distillery, sign agreements, just different things like that. Because the actual word tequila is trademarked by the Mexican government, the CRT, the uh, Regulatory Council of Tequila. Once we did all that, it was get down to business. So the agave is roasted between 30 to 38 hours in hornos, which are little ovens. And then it squeezes out all of that great sugar, that sweetness that you want in a tequila. And then Mm -hmm. the distillation process starts. And I'm not a distiller and I'm not constantly down in Mexico, but they've been doing this for, oh, wow, rough centuries, probably a long time. Yeah, Yeah, we work with actually one of the most awarded distilleries in all of Mexico. They actually create for a couple of other big brands as well. But ours is slightly different because we have the world's only coconut lime blanco tequila, and it's made with the all natural flavorings from the meat of the coconut and the lime. And that's been getting a lot of attention. Uh, It won a silver award at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition, which is kind of like the Oscars for the spirits industry, which is really cool for our first international competition. Yeah, Our Reposado is different as well. Most Reposados are rested around four months, typically in an American white oak barrel, but ours is rested in second generation Tennessee whiskey barrels, and we double the time. So it's rested for eight months, and you get a little bit of whiskey smoothness on the finish, which makes it really unique and very versatile. That one actually won a silver at the San Francisco Spirits Competition as well. I would imagine that probably picks up some of the kind of smokiness of the of the Tennessee whiskey too, yeah? It does. It, it grabs a little bit of that char. Uh, it has a deeper color. So if you look at it compared to some other Reposados on the market, it has more of a, a, a rich, deep amber hue, almost like a copper penny in a way. And you just get a lot of a lot of really good flavors from it. And then we also have a Blanco that we released on the market late last year. And that one of bronze at the uh, San Francisco. So all three of them, our first year, we won some pretty major awards, which is really exciting. 
So, yeah, because I wanted to ask you about the product, specifically that coconut lime Blanco. So I wasn't crazy in that I had not seen that before. Right. And as somebody who is a more casual tequila drinker, I found it to be really approachable. What was kind of the thought behind doing that? Because that is different than what I am used to with tequila. And, and it was something that paired really well with grapefruit and some different things like that. You actually nailed it. Tequila still has a horrible stereotype. And a lot of it is from us going down to Mexico, spring break, drinking the cheapest tequila that, that you can get your hands on, which is usually not the best option, drinking way too much of it, and then those fruity drinks. And everybody just blames their drunken stupor, their hangover on tequila. And it's really not the case. So what we wanted to do is, if we we're going to do this, we want to do it our way. And I was doing some blogging for my other company, and, and I went out to Las Perlas, which is the first Mezcal restaurant to open up in the United States. It's in Los Angeles. And I hung out there, and we talked about flavored Mezcal and how it was kind of like an underground thing in Mexico. It was very popular. And what I found was there wasn't a lot of flavored tequilas here. The other thing that I found out there is you know, a lot of people drink Blanco tequila with just a, a twist of lime or a twist of grapefruit, anything like that that was a fresh juice. So we figured out if we could do that and not use a sugary, syrupy flavoring and we can keep it natural, I think what we could do is open the door for non-tequila drinkers or vodka, flavored vodka drinkers, and start getting them to kind of cross over to drink tequila and, and invite them in. And once they're invited in and realize, wow, this is really good. This is not what I expected. This isn't what I tried in 1973. And we could kind of get them in the door and then move them over to our Blanco and then maybe graduate up into our Reposado. So mm -hmm. we really wanted to open up the door. We wanted to kick down the door completely and break that stereotype that, that tequila has. We wanted something to be very inviting for the non-tequila drinker. What's a good, relatively simple cocktail recipe for the coconut lime Blanco that you recommend to, to drinkers? What I like is really just doing a twist of lime. So the, the lime flavor is very faint. It follows the coconut. The coconut is more pronounced. So what I'll do is chill it first, twist of lime, and then I'll top it with a flavored LaCroix because it kind of gives it that, that sparkly flavor. And then also you're not adding calories yeah. and it's gone over really popular. It's very simple, you know, for restaurants, it creates a fantastic margin as well. I know that you guys also recently rebranded, right? You used to be called Teak yes. Tequila. Tell us a bit, a, a bit about that. And Teal, what does that mean? So and Teal is actually short for a species of hummingbird. There's two of them, Antillian Crested Hummingbird and Antillian Mango. So the first time that my wife and I, ever really talked about, you know, creating a tequila brand, it was sitting on the couch coming up with a name. We just came up with Teak. There was really no meaning behind it. We had a couple of other names. Antio was one of them, but we decided to go with Teak. The problem that has started is my other platform, Teak Life, where I do social micro-influencing for the liquor industry, people were getting the two confused. So, Without creating a new YouTube channel and losing all the momentum that I've gained on there, we decided to change and rebrand the tequila and give it more of a personality that ties into the logo, the hummingbird. And the other cool thing about it is it creates a better story because when my wife and I got engaged, we were in the Dominican Republic. And that was one of the first times we, we really kind of talked about a tequila as far as doing it. And we saw a hummingbird. So I've had like some of these really cool signs along the way. You know, you have your ups and downs in business, but the hummingbird has always resonated. And there have been some really unique times in our lives where we've seen a hummingbird. So changing the name over to Antille, it just flowed a lot better. And now we don't have confusion between two of my companies, Teak Life and what was Teak Tequila. And I heard you say earlier, it's available in about more than 400 uh, stores here in Michigan, did you say? Yeah, so we have been ordered by 400 locations in Michigan. So that's bars, restaurants, retail. And we haven't announced it yet. So I guess this is 
kind of an exclusive. There was an online retailer in Gross Point Woods Wholesale that is going to be processing all of our online orders. So it opens up 39 states. Ooh. And we are also expanding by the end of the month, early next month, really making a mark in Florida and California. Oh, that's big news for you then. It is. Yeah. So it's fun. COVID-19 kind of uh, hit us hard with some of those plans. We should have been further along in the expansion process, but you know, it is what it is. There's always bumps and bruises. There's always hills to get over, but that's business. Yeah. And Teal Tequila is the brand. You can find it at your favorite bar and restaurant now that they're starting to slowly reopen and uh, your closest liquor store purveyor. Don Ferguson is co-founder and CEO. Don, thanks so much for coming on Daily Detroit and best of luck with everything. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Since it's the end of the week, thanks are in order. First to Brenna Hauk and Fletcher Sharp for their contributions. Behind the screens, Cheyenne Osserini and Randy Walker. And of course, my colleague Sven Gustafson, who will be back from vacation for real next week. I'm Jer Stays. Thanks for listening to Your Daily Detroit. Take care of each other, and we'll get through this together.